Open Doors is a Christian organization founded at the height of the Cold War. Its original mission was to smuggle Bibles to Christians living in communist countries. Today, OpendoorsUSA.org monitors and reports on those who face persecution and discrimination for the belief in the Christian faith. By far the country most lethal to Christians in 2013 was Syria, where the minority Christian population has been targeted by anti-government extremists in the course of the political unrest that has plagued the country. Other countries on the list are Nigeria with 612 Christian martyrs, Pakistan with 88, and Egypt with 83. In its report, Open Doors USA makes the following claim. Islamist extremism is the worst prosecutor of the worldwide church. Nine of the ten most dangerous countries for Christians on Open Doors watch list for 2014 are those where a majority of the population identifies as Muslim. At the top of the list, however, where it has been since Open Doors USA began keeping track of the numbers, is North Korea. Open Doors admits not having solid numbers on Christians martyred by the Socialist Republic. Instead, they base their determination on the fact that practicing Christianity is illegal in North Korea, which espouses its own state religion focused on worship of the politically powerful. The report estimates that between 50 and 70,000 Koreans identified as Christians were or are held by the North Korean government as political prisoners for their beliefs. On January 12th, Pope Francis announced the names of 19 archbishops from around the world whom he has selected to join the College of Cardinals in Rome. Of the 19 men, 16 are eligible to vote for Francis' successor, and only four are Vatican officials. As many pundits expected, Francis has made some unexpected selections. The elector from the African nation of Burkina Faso, Archbishop Philippe Wedrogo, expressed surprise, saying that he thought there had been a mistake when he was called by the Vatican to become a cardinal. The Pope passed up several European archbishops and selected no Americans, opting instead for archbishops from a wider range of countries, including South Korea, England, Haiti, Chile, and Canada. In Haiti, the papal announcement of Bishop Chibli Langlois, the youngest appointee, came four years to the day of the earthquake that took the lives of an estimated 300,000 Haitians. Today we are marking four years since the earthquake, said Father Hans Alexander in Haiti, adding that the diocese is immensely touched at the Pope's compassion for the poor. The choice in cardinals is reflective of Pope Francis's mission to refocus the Catholic Church on the global plight of the destitute and marginalized as well as to guide it back to the core foundation of beliefs in service, humility, chastity, tolerance, and community outreach. He is the first non-European pontiff in the Roman Catholic Church in over 1,200 years, and may be expected to see him add to the diversity of the College of Cardinals. Consistory, the Vatican ceremony officially elevating the 19 archbishops to the status of cardinal, is scheduled for the 22nd of February. The Satanic Temple, a New York-based online organization, has released concept art for a monument it wants to donate to the state of Oklahoma for display at the Capitol Building. In 2012, the Oklahoma State Legislature authorized the placement of a monument to the Christian Ten Commandments near the steps of the Capitol Building in Oklahoma City. The Satanists believe they have the right to equal representation. Their statue is to be a seven-foot-tall representation of Baphomet with the horned head of a goat and dragon's wings. Visitors will be able to sit on the statue's lap for what Satanic Temple spokesman Lucien Greaves, real name Doug Mesner, called inspiration and contemplation. Greaves clearly expresses the subversive intent behind proposing the monument, saying, The idea was that Satanists, asserting their rights and privileges where religious agendas have been successful in imposing themselves upon public affairs, could serve as a poignant reminder that such privileges are for everybody. The American Civil Liberties Union agrees with the statement, but can't represent the Satanists directly. The ACLU has already sued the state of Oklahoma, claiming that the presence of any religious iconography on government property violates the spirit of the church-state separation in the U.S. Constitution. That case is ongoing. The Satanic Temple is not the only organization to have petitioned the Oklahoma legislature for a monument. An animal rights group, a Hindu leader in Nevada, and the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster have all requested their own monument at the Capitol building. Not surprisingly, the Oklahoma Capitol Preservation Commission recently announced a moratorium on considering any new requests pending the outcome of the ACLU lawsuit. <laughs>